Tiffany was only seen at the Lab Factory. It is no secret that Cat Williams is not a big fan of Tiffany Haddish. Recently, he decided to question her achievements and put them through a comedic interrogation. So when you say Tiffany Haddish, doesn't deserve or isn't really a comedian, and these other women have worked hard. I was like, dang, what'd I do to him? Did I f his man? But Tiffany Haddish, she's no wallflower. She clapped back with the kind of passion that could light up a room. She didn't just defend her presence in the comedy clubs. She paraded her extensive resume like a proud peacock. She reminded everyone that her journey to fame wasn't a walk in the park. However, when you think about it, Cat Williams may be right. Find out the juicy details in this video. Tiffany Haddish checks Cat Williams. It all started with the controversial interview where Cat Williams sat down with Shannon Sharp for his Club Shay Shay podcast. In the nearly three hour interview, Williams didn't hold back. He took aim at several fellow comedians, including Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer, accusing them of conspiring against him. But it was his comments about Tiffany Haddish that really caught everyone's attention. Cat Williams said, they think they can rewrite history. Guy Torrey did a beautiful special about the Comedy Store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the Comedy Store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. Williams seemed to be questioning Haddish's early career and suggesting that she hadn't achieved the success she claimed. These comments didn't sit well with Haddish, who wasted no time in firing back. Taking to social media, Haddish responded to Williams' comments under an Instagram gossip account. She wrote, I am not mad. I just wish he would get his facts right about me. Dang, I guess I will send him a reminder text. But are we sure that is Cat Williams? He looks a lot like Charleston White. But Haddish didn't stop there. The following evening, she took to the stage at the Danya Improv Comedy Theater in Dania Beach, Florida, where she unleashed her frustrations and set the record straight. She said, come to LA, I've been doing shit. I was on That's So Raven. I was on all the shits. I did extra work. I was on all the little white people TV shows, the black people TV shows. I used to be on Dance 360. I've been out here. I've been telling jokes since 1996. Haddish passionately defended her extensive resume, leaving no doubt that she has been hustling and making a name for herself in the comedy world for years. But what about Kat's claim that she never performed at the comedy store? Haddish had something to say about that too. This said, oh, they wouldn't let her perform at the comedy store. That's true. They wouldn't let me perform on the white nights at the comedy store, but I performed on all the black nights. They wouldn't let me perform on the white nights at the improv, but I performed on all the black and Latino nights. In case you don't know, the beef between Tiffany Haddish and Cat Williams started over five years ago. In a candid 2018 interview on V103's Frank and Wanda Morning Show, Cat didn't hold back as he questioned Haddish's comedic abilities and suggested that she hasn't proven herself as a legitimate comic. Cat aims at Haddish's rise to fame. He began by pointing out that Haddish has been doing comedy since she was 16, but challenged viewers to name their favorite Tiffany Haddish joke. According to Cat, the reason no one can answer that question is because Haddish hasn't done a tour or a special to showcase her comedic skills. He insinuated that Tiffany Haddish is an industry plant. She ain't done a special. She has not proven the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour, Cat boldly declared during the interview. He went on to criticize the industry for downplaying the talents of other comedians, such as Monique, while elevating Haddish based on her role in the hit movie Girls Trip. But Cat didn't stop there. He questioned whether Haddish actually wrote Girls Trip or if the script was handed to her. Cat seemed to imply that Haddish's success was not entirely earned suggesting that she was simply lucky to be cast in a popular film. This controversial statement raised eyebrows and sparked a larger conversation about the industry's treatment of black female comedians. Host Wanda Smith attempted to defend Haddish, highlighting her authenticity and relatability as reasons why she resonates with audiences. However, Kat dismissed these qualities, questioning when being real became marketable. He then made a shocking claim, suggesting that the industry only likes Haddish because she wants to sleep with a white man, referring to her public crush on Brad Pitt. Cat didn't stop at criticizing Haddish. He also took the opportunity to praise other black female comedians who he believed had been overlooked. He mentioned names like Lou Anel, Melanie Camarco, and Miss Laura, emphasizing that they were the ones who truly deserved recognition. The point is, we are in the only business where, as a black woman, what you look like is not supposed to be held against you. Cat passionately stated. He argued that the industry often gets sidetracked by appearances, favoring lighter skinned individuals over their darker skinned counterparts. Cat urged everyone to knock it off and recognize the talent and hard work of all black female comedians. These controversial comments from Cat Williams ignited a firestorm of debate within the comedy community and beyond. While some agree with his criticisms, 
Others argue that Haddish's success should not be diminished based on traditional standards of success in the industry. As the controversy unfolded, Tiffany Haddish took to Twitter to address the situation. While she didn't directly mention Kat, she shared a video of herself performing stand-up comedy and captioned it with a message about staying positive and focused on her goals. Haddish's response was met with support from her fans, who applauded her for taking the high road and not engaging in a public feud. Unsurprisingly, Kat's remarks about Haddish sparked a wave of backlash. Fans of Haddish and supporters of the comedy community were quick to voice their opinions on social media and in various online forums. Many argued that Kat's comments were unfair and unwarranted, questioning why he felt the need to tear down a fellow comedian. Charlemagne Thagad, one of the hosts of The Breakfast Club, weighed in on the controversy. He named Cat Williams the donkey of the day for his distasteful comments about Haddish. Charlemagne pointed out the discrepancy in Kat's claim that his stand-up special, Pimp Chronicles, had grossed $24 million questioning the source of that information. He emphasized that if Pimp Chronicles had indeed earned that much, it would be among the top 10 stand-up comedy concerts ever, which it isn't. The backlash against Cat continued to grow as more comedians and industry insiders voiced their opinions. Stand-up comedian Ricky Smiley expressed his disappointment in Cat's comments, stating that he has never attacked other comedians and always tries to uplift and motivate people. One of the first to come to Haddish's defense was none other than Kevin Hart. Hart, who has worked closely with Haddish in the past, took to the airwaves of the Breakfast Club to address Kat's comments. He expressed his disappointment in Kat's remarks and questioned why people of color are tearing each other down when they finally start getting opportunities in Hollywood. People of color begun to get opportunities in Hollywood. People of color won Emmys. When the people of color get these opportunities, why is it that people of color are the ones that are tearing the people of color that are getting these opportunities down? Kevin Hart passionately stated during the interview. These comments by Kevin Hart would be the start of his feud with Cat Williams. Kevin Hart claimed that Cat Williams had a chance in Hollywood, but messed it up by not showing up for work. Hart said Cat would skip promotional events, making studios worry. He also accused Cat of prioritizing drugs over his career. In a recent interview on Club Shay Shay, Cat defended himself. He strongly denied using drugs and insisted he was always sober. He challenged Hart's claims, saying he didn't scare off studios and told Shannon Sharp to check his IMDb profile for proof. Kat suggested that people in Hollywood don't remember Kevin Hart's early stand-up comedy shows being very popular or successful. He pointed out that Kevin Hart quickly got a TV show and starred in a movie called Soul Plane soon after moving to Los Angeles, which Kat thinks is unusually fast and suspicious. Just like Kat did with Tiffany five years earlier, he also insinuated that Kevin Hart is an industry plant. Let's look deeper into Cat Williams' claims about Tiffany Haddish. Is there any truth in these claims? Was he right? Let's rewind to the beginning. Tiffany Haddish burst onto the scene with her breakout role in the hit movie Girls Trip. The film, which also starred Queen Latifah, Jada Pinkett Smith, and Regina Hall, was a massive success, catapulting Tiffany into the spotlight. She became an overnight sensation, capturing the hearts of audiences with her raw and relatable humor. Soon after, Tiffany graced the cover of Time magazine as one of the most influential people. This recognition solidified her status as a rising star in the entertainment industry. It was around this time that Cat Williams began to question the authenticity of Tiffany's success. As the controversy unfolded, it became clear that Cat Williams was not alone in his skepticism. Many talented comedians, particularly those who had been in the industry for years, felt overshadowed by Tiffany's sudden success. They believed that she had been handpicked by the establishment and given opportunities that were not afforded to other equally talented individuals. But what exactly does it mean to be handpicked by the establishment? According to Cat Williams, it refers to the powers in Hollywood that control the narrative and decide which artists will rise to fame. These individuals have the ability to shape public opinion and propel certain talents into the spotlight, while others are left in the shadows. Many people agreed with Kat's criticism about unfairness in the entertainment industry. Comedians who worked hard for a long time felt ignored and not appreciated enough. They wondered why Tiffany, who hadn't been in the industry for very long, was being called the funniest and most important comedian of her time. As the debate raged on, it became clear that Tiffany's rise to fame was not solely based on her comedic abilities. There were other factors at play, including her marketability and the industry's desire for a fresh face. Some argued that Tiffany's appeal lay in her relatability and authenticity, while others believed that she was simply a product of careful grooming and strategic positioning. Regardless of the differing opinions, one thing was certain. Tiffany Haddish had become a force to be reckoned with in Hollywood. Her infectious personality and unique comedic style endeared her to audiences worldwide. 
But as the saying goes, with great fame comes great scrutiny. Let's start with the scandal that rocked the industry. Tiffany found herself at the center of a controversy involving Ari Spears, a fellow comedian. The details of the scandal were murky. The scandal involving Tiffany Haddish relates to a lawsuit in which she and Ari Spears were accused of grooming and molesting two siblings, identified as Jane Doe and John Doe. The lawsuit claims that these incidents took place when the siblings were children. Haddish's lawyer vehemently denied these allegations, describing the lawsuit as frivolous and asserting that the claims have been repeatedly dismissed as meritless. The lawsuit alleges that Haddish recruited Jane Doe at a comedy camp and later instructed her on how to perform sexual acts. It further claims that both siblings were involved in a video shoot at Spears' home, where Jane Doe claims to have been directed to mimic sexual acts, and John Doe was filmed in a video titled Through a Pedophile's Eyes. The video allegedly involved inappropriate scenes and suggestions of sexual conduct involving the minor. The lawsuit was eventually dismissed, but the impact on Haddish's career was significant. She claimed to have lost all her jobs and to be jobless following the public scrutiny and fallout from the lawsuit. She expressed relief at the lawsuit's dismissal and concern for the well-being of the children involved in the skit. Haddish also stated that she no longer speaks to Spears and does not wish to be associated with him. As quickly as the scandal emerged, it seemed to fade into the background. Many wondered if there was more to the story than met the eye. Was there a hidden agenda at play? Were there forces at work to protect Tiffany's image and ensure the scandal didn't tarnish her rising star? Fast forward to the present, and Tiffany Haddish finds herself in the midst of another controversy. She was recently arrested for driving under the influence, a serious offense that carries significant consequences. But the controversies surrounding Tiffany don't end there. The parents of children involved in the scandal with Aries Spears have come forward, expressing their dissatisfaction with the settlement they received. They claim that they are not willing to stay silent and are determined to speak out, regardless of any legal agreements. These revelations have reignited the public's interest in the scandal, raising questions about what truly transpired and whether any underlying issues were swept under the rug. The industry, once protective of Tiffany, seems to be shifting its stance. The once impenetrable shield is cracking, and the truth is starting to seep through. As the controversies continue to resurface, it becomes evident that the industry is no longer willing to protect Tiffany at all costs. The public can see that something is amiss, and they are demanding answers. The once adoring fans are now questioning the authenticity of Tiffany's rise to fame and the narratives that have been carefully crafted around her. Some speculate that Tiffany's decline in the industry is a result of her refusal to conform to the expectations set by Hollywood. When artists deviate from the prescribed path, they risk being humiliated and exposed. The industry, known for its power dynamics, can quickly turn on those who don't play by the rules. In the entertainment industry, handlers play a crucial role in shaping the image and trajectory of a celebrity's career. These individuals, often behind the scenes, are responsible for managing the day-to-day -day affairs of their clients, including public relations, contracts, and strategic decision-making. While their role is essential, there have been instances where handlers have been accused of manipulating and controlling their clients for their own gain. When it comes to Tiffany Haddish, questions arise about the people surrounding her and their intentions. One individual who has been closely associated with Tiffany is Jason Lee, the founder of Hollywood Unlocked and self-proclaimed best friend of Tiffany. But is their relationship purely based on friendship or is there more to it? Jason Lee, with one of the largest Instagram pages for gossip and vlogs, has been instrumental in shaping the narrative around Tiffany Haddish. He has defended her in the face of controversies and has been a vocal supporter. However, some skeptics argue that his involvement goes beyond friendship and into the realm of being a handler. A prime example of this is when Jason posted photos of Tiffany during what was supposed to be a beach photo shoot. However, instead of showcasing her in the best light, the photos depicted Tiffany looking disheveled and intoxicated. This act seemed deliberate as if Jason was serving her up to the public for judgment and humiliation. But why would a best friend expose Tiffany to such scrutiny? It's a question that leaves us scratching our heads. Could Jason be complicit in orchestrating these controversies to further his interests or those of the industry? The timing of these events raises suspicions. The scandal with Aries Spears quickly faded from the public eye, and Tiffany's recent DUI arrest has once again brought her under scrutiny. It's as if the industry is using these incidents to keep her in check, to remind her of the consequences of stepping out of line. The public's perception of Tiffany has been significantly influenced by the scandals and controversies that have surrounded her. The once bright star is now facing a storm of doubt and skepticism. The cracks in her carefully constructed image are becoming more apparent, 
and the consequences may be far reaching. In the cutthroat world of Hollywood, nonconformity can come at a high price. When a celebrity refuses to play by the rules or challenge the status quo, they often face a series of challenges that can impact their career and personal life. Tiffany Haddish's journey serves as a prime example of the difficulties faced by those who dare to be different. One of the consequences of nonconformity is the risk of being ostracized by the industry. When a celebrity refuses to adhere to the expectations set by the powers that be, they may find themselves marginalized and excluded from lucrative opportunities. This can lead to a decline in visibility and a struggle to secure meaningful roles or projects. Tiffany Haddish's career has experienced its fair share of ups and downs, with controversies and rumors swirling around her. The industry's response to these challenges can be telling. While some celebrities receive support and protection from their handlers and industry insiders, others are left to fend for themselves. It begs the question, is Tiffany being abandoned by those who were once in her corner? Another consequence of nonconformity is the potential for public scrutiny and judgment. When a celebrity deviates from the expected norms, they become easy targets for criticism and ridicule. The media and public opinion can be relentless, tearing down those who don't fit neatly into the industry's mold. This can take a toll on their mental health and overall well-being. As we've seen with Tiffany Haddish, the release of controversial photos and the resurfacing of scandals can be used as a means of control and manipulation. These tactics aim to tarnish a celebrity's reputation and make them appear unstable or unreliable. It's a harsh reality that those who challenge the industry's expectations may find themselves at the mercy of powerful forces. One of the key implications of these controversies is the potential damage to Tiffany's credibility as a comedian. Cat Williams' criticism, though met with mixed reactions, has raised valid questions about Tiffany's comedic abilities. The lack of memorable jokes or impactful moments has left some wondering if her rise to fame was truly earned. Industry plants in the music industry. People are confused about claims that Tiffany Haddish is an industry plant, a term not commonly used for comedians. This term started being popular around the early 2000s. It was first used against musicians like Chance the Rapper, who became famous very quickly. People accused Chance of being an industry plant meaning they thought his fame was not because of his talent, but because record companies secretly helped him become popular. Being called an industry plant in hip hop is a big issue because hip hop music often focuses on the artist's real life struggles and hard times. Many hip hop artists tell stories in their songs about how they face tough challenges and made it on their own. This helps them connect with their fans who also have had hard times. When someone is accused of being an industry plant, it means people think they are not being honest about being independent and self-made. Instead, they might be getting secret help and money from the music industry. This accusation can make fans doubt the artist's truthfulness, especially if they like the artist because they related to their stories of overcoming difficulties. The term industry plant became more common as social media and music streaming services grew. These platforms allow musicians to become famous quickly through online followers and playlists that are suggested by computer programs. This new way means that new artists can become popular without needing the traditional music industry support. Music streaming has been really important in helping industry plants become popular. In 2019, Billboard started to focus more on songs and albums that were streamed a lot. This change led to some unexpected artists showing up on the charts. It became easier for new artists to become popular and have hit songs. Also, services like Spotify added a feature that automatically plays songs similar to what the listener already likes. This helped artists get noticed and popular without having to promote their music a lot or have connections in the music industry. This concept didn't just stay in hip hop, it spread to other music styles like pop, indie, and punk. A famous example is Lana Del Rey. When her song Video Games became a hit, some people said she was an industry plant. They thought her quick rise to fame and her image were created by her label, not because she was a truly talented artist. Billie Eilish was also accused of being an industry plant which means some people thought she became famous because the music industry supported her, not because of her talent. Eilish, known for her unique style and haunting voice, didn't believe in this idea. She thought it was impossible to fake real success. Artists like Phoebe Bridges and Claro, who became famous for their homemade music, were also questioned about how they got famous. Some critics thought their fame wasn't real and that they weren't truly independent. Even punk music, which is all about rebelling and not following the mainstream, had similar accusations. A pop punk band called the Tramp Stamps was heavily criticized and became very unpopular on TikTok, as people thought they were industry plants. Now let's turn our attention to the sensational rapper and personality Cardi B. Cardi's rise to fame was nothing short of meteoric, capturing the attention of fans and critics alike. However, 
With such rapid success, accusations of being an industry plant began to swirl. Critics questioned the seemingly overnight success of Cardi B's breakout hit, Bodak Yellow, which catapulted her to stardom. Many believed that her rise to fame was too quick and too orchestrated to be genuine. They argued that there must have been a carefully crafted plan behind her success, orchestrated by the music industry. One of the most vocal critics of Cardi B's alleged industry plant status was fellow rapper Azealia Banks. In a Twitter thread, Azealia boldly stated she was an industry plant. However, Azealia also acknowledged Cardi B's ability to seize the moment and assemble the right team, ultimately making herself a cultural mainstay. Cardi B, on the other hand, vehemently denied these accusations. In response to the claims, she took to social media, writing, you can't buy the general public, no machine, no money can buy that, you can't buy the people. Cardi firmly believed that her success was a result of her genuine connection with her fans and her undeniable talent. In an interview with Billboard, Cardi B addressed the accusations head on, stating, I worked hard for my spot, I deserve it, I've been through things, I've experienced things, I've been in the streets. She emphasized her journey from being a stripper to becoming a successful artist, highlighting the challenges she faced along the way. Gabriella Wilson, also known as Her, is another artist who came under scrutiny. H.E.R.'s career ascent has been nothing short of remarkable, but with her mysterious persona, critics have questioned the authenticity of her rise to fame. Many skeptics argue that the music industry carefully crafted H.E.R.'s persona to create intrigue and buzz around her. They believe that her enigmatic nature was a deliberate strategy to generate interest and establish her as a unique artist. Some even suggest that her career truly kicked off in 2016, leading to speculation about her true origins. Her herself has addressed the industry plant theory on social media, expressing her frustration with the accusations. In a comment on Instagram, she wrote, I've seen so many bands and artists with a small amount of followers sell out MSG and headline some huge festivals. Y'all think everybody's underrated or an industry plant with massive success outside of Instagram. Her response highlights the fact that success can come to artists with a smaller following and that social media metrics alone do not define an artist's talent or legitimacy. Her believes that her success is a result of her artistry and the genuine connection she has established with her audience. What happens when an artist's rise to fame is intertwined with a reality show? This is the case for Lotto, formerly known as Mulatto, who gained recognition through her appearance on a reality show. However, her success has not come without its fair share of controversy, as many have accused her of being an industry plant. Lotto's journey began when she competed in the rap game, a reality show that aimed to discover the next big hip-hop star. Her talent and charisma caught the attention of both the judges and the audience, propelling her to the forefront of the competition. Despite not winning the show, Lotto used the platform as a springboard for her career, rebranding herself and embarking on a solo path. While Lotto's appearance on the rap game provided her with a platform, it also raised questions about the authenticity of her success. Critics argue that her exposure to a reality show gave her a shortcut to fame, bypassing the traditional route of grinding in the underground rap scene. They question whether her talent and skills were truly developed or if they were manufactured for the sake of entertainment. Another point of contention is Lotto's rebranding and image transformation. After leaving the rap game, she decided to change her stage name from Mulatto to Lotto, citing concerns over the racial implications of her previous moniker. Alongside the name change, she also underwent a visual transformation, adopting a new aesthetic and presenting herself in a more polished manner. While rebranding is not uncommon in the music industry, critics argue that Lato's transformation was a calculated move to distance herself from the controversy surrounding her previous name and to appeal to a wider audience. We've established that the term industry plant is often used in music, but it can now refer to other parts of the entertainment industry. This was evident in the example involving Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish that Cat Williams talked about. If you enjoyed this video, Click on the card showing on your screen right now for more videos.